including a meeting at the New York Attorney General's office this week with a former president. Former President Donald Trump facing another legal battle in the Big Apple. We are ready to fight. This is going to be a long fight. We understand this. We stand by FDA's approval. The White House rallying support behind its fight to keep the abortion pill on the market. What we know right now about the moves being made at the federal and state levels to keep it on the shelves. Acts of violence like this hurt. They tear at the fabric of who we are, at our society, at our state, at our country. In a city. The city of Louisville, Kentucky, in shock after a gunman kills five people and wounds eight more in a shooting at a bank. And shouts of joy at Nashville City Council meeting. <laughs> As its members vote unanimously to send an expelled lawmaker back to the state house. Strip News Live begins right now. President Donald Trump due back in New York this week to sit for a deposition in a $250 million civil suit against the Trump Organization. Welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Tuesday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. So Trump will reportedly sit for a deposition at New York Attorney General Letitia James's office on Thursday. It will be the second time Trump will be deposed in connection with a civil suit that alleges that the Trump Organization committed large-scale tax fraud, purposely understating the values of its properties for tax purposes while at the very same time inflating the value of its assets in order to secure favorable loan rates. Now, there are new developments at the same time in a separate case involving Mr. Trump about 200 miles south in Washington, D.C., that his attorneys have filed an appeal in to a judge's order that would compel former Vice President Mike Pence to testify before a grand jury investigating January 6th. Trump's motion, if granted by the appeals court, could block that testimony. Let's get you right out to Washington, where national political correspondent Kevin Cirilli joins us from the White House. So, Kevin, I know that you've been tracking Trump for a while. You've been covering his campaign since the 2016 election. You've seen the president take up multiple attempts here to block people from testifying before juries investigate him. So give us a little bit more of the background on this and, and why he's still trying to silence witnesses. Veronica, former President Trump taking on the legal system here in Washington, D.C. by going against his former Vice President Mike Pence and now a very clear division between Trump and Pence. Pence, remember, said that he would comply with the judge's order to testify before the grand jury in the January 6th case here in Washington. But now Trump says he doesn't want that to happen. This has reopened old political wounds that, quite frankly, never really healed following the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Remember, the grand jury wants to hear from about a handful of private meetings that Trump had with Pence in the weeks and days leading up to January 6th. Pence has said that during those conversations, he was told by Trump himself to look into overturning the results of the 2020 election. As vice president, he was also the president of the United States Senate and charged with certifying the results of the election, something that, of course, he did. But separately, Trump politically now feels that it is in his political interest to go after Pence to try to position him as someone who is in with the legal opposition that he faces. Take a listen to what his attorney said just the other day on Meet the Press. They have literally put in everybody to grand jury you could imagine. They don't respect any privilege that President Trump holds. And it's desperately uh, trying to find an obstruction angle that just isn't there. Now, as far as the polls are concerned, Trump has not faced any significant pushback uh, for the 2024 polls. He remains the early frontrunner uh, of the Republican race. Separately, Pence polling in single digits, but he feels that he can make a direct pitch, I'm told, to evangelicals and that by complying with the courts, he will be able to uh, renew a sense of trust in the political system. We'll see if it works. But either way, these two are have never been further apart as it relates politically. Veronica? It really is interesting how things happen sometimes. Kevin's really lying for us at the White House. Kevin, thank you so much. Just a mile uptown now from the New York State Attorney General is the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, where DA Alvin Bragg has been slamming the Republican-led House Judiciary Committee's plans to hold a hearing on crime in New York City. Now, committee chair Jim Jordan of Ohio is saying that hearing will take place next week and that it will focus on DA Bragg's, quote, 
pro-crime anti-victim policies that have led to an increase in violent crime in New York, end quote. But Bragg has dismissed the plan as a political stunt, accusing Congressman Jordan of wasting taxpayer dollars to travel to New York and adding that the city of Columbus, Ohio, has a higher murder rate than New York City. In the meantime, Democrats are announcing plans to host next year's Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Late this morning, the party hailed its return to the Midwest, which it calls a, quote, critical Democratic stronghold. President Biden calling the selection a, quote, great choice and says the city has already reaped the benefits of his massive infrastructure law, putting $144 million towards a project to rehabilitate the Port Calumet River bridges. The president, in the meantime, is on the move again. This is video of Biden boarding Air Force One at Joint Base Andrews this morning. He's now on his way to Northern Ireland, where he's scheduled to arrive in Belfast at just after 4 p.m. Eastern. While he's there, the president will be marking 25 years since the Good Friday Agreement, which helped end much of the political turmoil that happened in that region. Let's get you live out to Belfast, where Scripps News correspondent Julia Chapman is. Julia, what security measures are in place ahead of the president's visit? And, and are there any threats that we know about right now? There is a very heavy police presence in the centre of Belfast. A number of streets have been cordoned off. Vehicles aren't allowed to go down them in the area around the hotel where President Biden will be staying. And indeed, several hundred extra police officers have been drafted into Northern Ireland from other parts of the UK to help bolster the police presence here. It comes just two weeks after security services in the UK uh, increased the terrorism threat level in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland, anticipating some unrest around the anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. Easter is always a sensitive time in Northern Ireland. And indeed, on Monday, there was an attack on a police vehicle at a parade in Derry, also known as London Derry. That vehicle set fire, but the situation died down reasonably quickly. And there are, of course, security concerns around this trip. It's only a 24-hour visit to Northern Ireland by the U.S. President. But certainly one with a very high level of security uh, and that is one of the concerns even 25 years after the Good Friday Agreement trying to maintain peace and security in this region is still a challenge uh, and one that Joe Biden says is a priority ahead of this visit. And Julia like you were just saying this is a very very quick trip it's about 24 hours uh, what will the president be able to accomplish what do we expect to see from his visit? There are certainly expectations that he may be able to wield some influence over the political players here in Northern Ireland where there still remains a deadlock over Brexit agreements because even when the Good Friday Agreement was signed 25 years ago, creating this power-sharing arrangement between uh, Republicans and Unionists, uh, to this day there are still major issues and in fact the Northern Ireland executive has not been in place for over a year now because of Unionist concerns about Brexit and how it uh, separates the island of Ireland from the rest of the UK. Uh, but certainly there are expectations that Joe Biden may be able to uh, put some clout towards resolving that process, uh, putting on putting in the context of the Good Friday Agreement anniversary saying look how much has been achieved but still pointing out that more needs to be done to maintain peace uh, and political security here in the uh, country uh, but he will also be meeting with the Prime Minister of the UK Rishi Sunak talking about trading arrangements investment in Northern Ireland and then he carries on to the Republic of Ireland where he'll be carrying out some visits to ancestral homes meeting distant relatives and talking with political leaders there as well. Very, very busy agenda indeed. Julia Chapman live for us in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Julia, thank you so much. So just before boarding Air Force One this morning, President Biden was asked about Friday's ruling from a federal judge in Texas, which could invalidate the FDA's approval of the abortion pill and pull it off the market. And, and on the abortion pill ruling, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are it's completely out of bounds what the judge did. Thank you. Congressional correspondent Stephanie Brian live for us on Capitol Hill right now. So Stephanie, the president kept his criticism of this ruling short and sweet, but his administration has definitely had much more to say in this appeal filed by the Justice Department. What can you tell us? 
Hey, Veronica, good afternoon. Well, the Justice Department yesterday formally filing an appeal to that Texas judge's ruling that would take Mifepristone off the um, market after Friday this week. And in the Department of Justice's um, appeal, they called the Texas judge's ruling extraordinary and unprecedented, noting that it really, there is no precedent for a single judge overruling a decision, a medical and scientific decision made by a panel of experts at the FDA. So the um, De Department of Justice asking an appeals court to um, put a stay on the lower court judge's ruling, ensuring that Mifepristone would remain on the market after Friday this week, while the case continues to work its way through the legal system. Senator Tina Smith, a member of the Health, Education, Labor and Pension Committee, said she supports the Biden administration's decision to go after this process through the court system. Take a listen. This judge's decision is an outrage and it throws into question uh, over 20 years of safe and effective use of this drug mifepristone to terminate pregnancies early. I'm thinking about all the women who go to Planned Parenthood and clinics all over this country who are trying to figure out what this means for them and their ability to make decisions about their own lives and their own bodies. Uh, this decision must be reversed in the courts. So the appeal that the Department of Justice filed was over an, almost 900 pages in total, so a lot included in what they are uh, sending to the appeals court. But right now we're just stuck in a bit of a wait and see um, aspect as we're waiting to see if the appeals court would be able to take some move before that Friday deadline that we are currently facing for that abortion pill, Veronica. And Stephanie, we were just listening there to Senator Smith. Uh, what about other members of Congress here? Have they been as vocal on this issue? Well, of course, Democrats have been very vocal about opposing this justice's de uh, this judge's decision from Texas. There are actually two House Democrats who have already introduced a bill in yesterday's pro forma session trying to target this exact issue and trying to make sure that the FDA's approval of Mifepristone does not get overruled by the courts. But, you know, that is one of a number of abortion-related bills that have been introduced this Congress. There's the Women's Health Protection Act that we had last Congress as well has been introduced in both chambers again this year. But but right now with the split Congress, a lot of these bills might be able to make it through a Democratic controlled Senate, but it's really unlikely to see any of these bills, especially all being introduced by Democrats, hard to find a path forward for them in the Republican controlled House. We have heard some members of Congress urging the FDA just to ignore this ruling, but, but can the FDA and the Biden administration just ignore the Texas judge's ruling? Well, that calls to do that have actually come from really widely different parts of Capitol Hill. We've heard calls to ignore the ruling from, you know, your progressives like Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We've also heard it from Republican, South Carolina Republican Nancy Mace, that she was urging the FDA to just disregard the judge's ruling. And she thinks her party has been on the wrong side of this abortion issue since Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court. Take a listen. This is an issue that Republicans have been largely on the wrong side of. Um, we have, over the last nine months, not shown compassion towards women. So we've got some extreme views on this issue, but 90% of America is somewhere in the middle. And I think that that 90% would be okay with listening to the FDA rather than a judge who used an old law that was determined unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. I think the vast, vast majority of Americans would support that decision. Now, the White House was directly asked yesterday, would the Biden administration consider just ignoring this rule? And White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre really pushed back and she said that in its own right. The Biden administration, the FDA, ignoring a legal ruling from a federal judge would set a bad precedent of its own. So Jean-Pierre saying the White House is prepared for this legal fight, prepared for a long legal flight. She said she expects this case to make it to the Supreme Court and she expect, expressed confidence that the White House would prevail, prevail if the case makes it all that way. All right, Stephanie Lieberman reporting live for us from the Capitol. Stephanie, thank you so much. And we have much more to come for you in this hour of Scripps News Live, including an expelled Tennessee lawmaker's triumphant return to the State House after being reinstated by the Nashville City Council. Also, the mother of a six-year-old Virginia boy accused of shooting his teacher in class is now facing criminal charges. Plus, police releasing new details about yesterday's deadly shooting at a bank in Louisville, Kentucky. You're watching Scripps News Live, and we will be right back. 
Attention all business owners. If you had W-2 employees during the COVID-19 pandemic, you may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee with the Employee Retention Tax Credit. The deadline to file your claims is approaching. Call now to see if your business qualifies. This approved payroll tax refund program from the U.S. Treasury Department is set up to reward business owners who kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. There is no limit on the amount of funding. Plus, you can get access to your cash in a matter of weeks. You want a trusted partner who understands the IRS guidelines. ERC experts are standing by to help your business claim your COVID refund. You may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee. This quick and easy call can get your business the money it deserves. Don't miss the deadline to file your claims. Just call 800-360-1106. That's 800-360-1106. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket, and this, this is a filet mignon. For a limited time, our Burger Perfection flight comes with 20 big, juicy burgers, all for just $79.99, plus free shipping. Get it today at omahasteaks.com slash TV. This is Burger Perfection, guaranteed. Action! Stunts have become more specialized because everything has to be bigger and better. What was the moment where you decided you want to be a stunt driver? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's happening. We're just very fortunate to have been able to work on everything everywhere all at once. I'm still very starstruck, to be honest. Next Gen Stunts on In Real Life. New episode Sunday night at 9, 8 central. Only on Scripps News. The total number of deaths in a shooting spree at a Louisville, Kentucky bank has now risen to five. Police confirming late last night that 57-year-old Deanna Eckert succumbed to her injuries despite undergoing multiple surgeries in an attempt to save her life. She is one of five innocent people who walked into the old National Bank building in downtown Louisville yesterday with no idea that she'd be ending up facing a gunman with a rifle and a deadly grudge. Just before noon, police held a news conference that confirmed the 25-year-old gunman behind the violence was an employee at the Old National Bank. He purchased his weapon legally last Tuesday in Louisville. They're also confirming that he live-streamed his rampage as he killed co-workers and wounded eight other people before officers shot and killed him on the scene. Scripps News National Correspondent Maura Sirianni reports for us now from Louisville. She has the details on yet another crime leaving another American community in shock and the calls to action that have come in the hours since. Today is a tragic day in Louisville and for the entire Commonwealth of Kentucky. Acts of violence like this hurt. Investigators said the shooter, an old National Bank employee, had recently been notified that he was going to be terminated, although we don't know why. This is, will be a long, complex investigation involving local, state, and our federal partners. Investigators said the shooter live-streamed the attack on Instagram as he used a rifle to open fire on employees in a conference room during a morning meeting. Five bank executives were killed, ranging in age from 40 to 64. The victims identified Monday as Josh Barrick, Jim Tutt, Juliana Farmer, Deanna Eckert, and Tommy Elliott, a man Kentucky's governor described as a close friend. Tommy Elliott helped me build my law career, helped me become governor, gave me advice on being a good dad, it's one of the people I talk to most in the world, and very rarely are we talking about my job. The attack took place around 8.30 a.m. Monday. 
Police taking just three minutes to respond and rush into the building before returning fire and killing the suspect. Without a doubt, their actions saved lives. One of the officers who rushed into the bank, 26-year-old Nicholas Wilt, currently in critical condition following surgery after police say he was shot in the head. LMPD's the interim academy. chief said Wilt had just graduated from the police academy less than two weeks ago. I just swore him in and his family was there to witness his journey to become a police officer. Old National Bank employees and community members reeling from the country's most recent mass killing, gathering at prayer vigils across the city. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who represents the Commonwealth of Kentucky, tweeting in part, Elaine and I are devastated by the news. Thank you to LMPD and our first responders for your bravery at the scene. President Biden issued a statement that reads in part, once again, our nation is in mourning after a senseless act of gun violence. Jill and I are praying for those killed and injured in the tragic shooting in Louisville and for the survivors who will carry grief and trauma for the rest of their lives. The president also urging Republicans to pass legislation that would eliminate gun manufacturers' immunity from liability, require safe storage of firearms, and background checks for gun sales. Police and federal agents seen searching the home of the shooter as part of the investigation. Authorities said the gun used was an AR-15 style rifle, the same type of weapon used in mass shootings at a supermarket in Buffalo, elementary schools in Nashville, Sandy Hook and Uvalde, a movie theater in Aurora and a nightclub in Orlando. Mara Sirianni, Scripps News. Democratic Representative Morgan McGarvey will join us in the next hour of Scripps News Live. He represents the 3rd District of Kentucky, where yesterday's deadly bank shooting occurred. And he'll be sharing political reaction to the tragedy and what lawmakers are planning to do next. Well, the mother of the Virginia six-year-old who reportedly shot his teacher is now being charged with felony child neglect. Deja Taylor is also charged with recklessly leaving a loaded gun around a child. One of her attorneys said that she's going to be turning herself in later this week. 25-year-old Abby's Werner was shot in the hand and chest at Rich Neck Elementary School. She was hospitalized for two weeks and had four surgeries. Ms. Werner is suing the school system for $40 million. She claims that school officials ignored the warnings about that child having a weapon that day. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, the Biden administration says a Wall Street Journal reporter under arrest in Russia is being wrongfully detained. What the new designation means for efforts to bring him home. Also, just five days after being expelled from the Tennessee State House, Representative Justin Jones is back. Scripps News National Correspondent Stephanie Sandoval takes us inside last night's emotional city council vote to reinstate him. That's next. Nothing is more important than family. A family you're born into, a family you choose, or a family you make. I'm Padma Lakshmi. I came to this country when I was four years old with my mother. We came here because it was a land of opportunity. But for many, that's not the case. Porque primero me separaron de mi mamá y de ahí de mi hermano. Immigrant families are being separated. Black and brown families are torn apart by a broken legal system. LGBTQ people suffer discrimination in adoption and health care. The need to protect and defend the civil liberties we all hold dear is more urgent than ever because families belong together. You can help by joining the American Civil Liberties Union today. Call or go online now and become an ACLU Guardian of Liberty. All it takes is just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day. The ACLU has fought to allow LGBTQ couples to marry, for racial justice, to stop family separation. We can't do this work without you. Together, we can defend our democracy, ensure liberty and justice for all, and keep families strong. So please, call the ACLU now or go to myaclu.org. When you use your credit card, you'll receive this special member kit to show you're part of a movement to defend free speech, protect our civil liberties, and keep families together. 
hope you'll join me in supporting the ACLU today. Because we, the people, means all of us. Call or go online to myaclu.org to become a guardian of liberty today. Is your teen addicted to social media? Are they showing signs of depression or eating disorders? Listen up. This could concern you. A whistleblower has reported that their platform was knowingly exposing children to dangerous topics and posts. The whistleblower claims that this algorithm is also causing body image issues, eating disorders, and more. What's worse is that social media company was shown the research and had done nothing about it. Turns out they've known about it for years. If your child has shown signs of suicide risk, mental health issues, and or an eating disorder, you could be entitled to compensation. We're representing other families just like yours. Do not delay. Morgan & Morgan for the people. Call 855-800-6927. 855-800-6927. That's 855-800-6927. Call now. If I had to replace my engine, the bill would have been over four grand. But my endurance auto protection plan covered it all. A broken AC unit costs over $1,800. A transmission, over $3,000. And an engine, over $4,000. Breakdowns used to mean paying thousands out of pocket until now. Go to endurancewarranty.com or call Endurance today and stop paying for expensive auto repairs. Call 877-204-1467 or visit endurancewarranty.com for a free quote. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence. With crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. Take a look at that. Shouts of joy coming from inside Nashville's historic Metro Courthouse last night as the 36-member city council voted unanimously to send expelled lawmaker Justin Jones back to the state house. Less than an hour later, Jones was sworn back into the Tennessee legislature to represent the people of Nashville once again, just five days after he was expelled from the Republican-controlled House for leading a protest demanding gun control. Representative Jones made a triumphant return to the House floor, walking with a fist raised, flanked by his colleague, Representative Gloria Johnson. He vowed to continue the fight. Scripps News National Correspondent Stephanie Sandoval is in Nashville for us with more on the council's unanimous vote. They voted quickly to reappoint uh, State Representative Justin Jones back into his seat, of course, as interim uh, at the state capitol a couple blocks away. Uh, he was sworn in back to his seat and he was able to walk back on the House floor. Days after being expelled from the Tennessee legislature, Justin Jones is back in his role as a state representative. Representative Jones. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I want to welcome the people back to the people's house. I want to, I want to welcome democracy back to the people's house. That on last Thursday, members of this body tried to crucify democracy, but today we stand as a witness of a resurrection of a movement of a multiracial democracy that no unjust decision will stand. The Nashville City Council voted unanimously to reappoint Jones back to the State House. No justice, no peace. Protesters gathered outside of City Hall to stand in support of Jones ahead of the Metro Council's special meeting, days after the GOP led House expelled him and Justin Pearson for disrupting the House floor to demand gun reform. When they expelled us, they had no idea that this was going to happen. They just thought that as they always do, that they would abuse their power and there would be no resistance, that they would do something unconstitutional and we would just have to wait to seek accountability. What we say to that, that there comes a time where time itself is ready for a change and that time has come to Nashville. 
And it didn't take long. Justin Jones has been elected as the interim successor. City Council members tag Jones as interim to fill his own vacant House seat until special election is held. After the vote, Jones was sworn back in on the steps of the Capitol, walking back into the House chamber. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for the days ahead for Tennessee, not because of the actions of this body, but because of the actions of the people out there and the thousands gathered outside this chamber right now who are calling for something better. He also called on protesters to stand together and ask that Cameron Sexton resign as House Speaker. Cameron Sexton, we are calling on you to resign because you are an enemy to democracy. For now, the fight for gun legislation isn't over. Stephanie Sandoval, Scripps News. Nashville. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, the State Department launching an investigation into the leak of sensitive Pentagon intelligence on the war in Ukraine. Scripps News National Security Correspondent Sasha Ingber has been studying those documents and speaking with U.S. intelligence sources about them. What she has uncovered, that's next. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with free installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi Bath Remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they did in just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to JacuzziBathRemodel.com to get free installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for one year. Go to JacuzziBathRemodel.com or call 800-218-1279. That's 800-218-1279. Call now. I'm Jason Bellini in Ukraine reporting for Scripps News. In a war half a world away. You learn pretty fast when you just survive. There are stories you will never forget. Stay with Scripps News. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Della Cruz. Thank you so much for being with us on this Tuesday. It's great to see you. Let's get up to speed right now on the biggest stories that we're tracking for you at this hour. Monday, the State Department officially designated Evan Gerskovich as being wrongfully detained. And that designation means the State Department will take the lead in securing his release and will open the door for a prisoner swap. Russian authorities arrested him on espionage charges last month, and one of his friends spoke with him recently and says that he is feeling the enormity of the situation. You know, I can only guess as to what he's thinking. I'm sure he understands the gravity of his situation, but at the end of the day, we want to center Evan's humanity in this situation, and we really just want to get him back home as soon as, soon as we can and as safely as we can. Evan Gershkovich has appealed his arrest, and that appeal is scheduled to be heard on April 18th. Several thousand U.S. troops have joined more than 5,000 troops from the Philippines in combat exercises across the South China Sea. It is the largest operation of its kind in decades, and it comes a day after China finished three days of military exercises near Taiwan. The State Department says any concerns from China is much ado about nothing. There's no reason 
for tensions across the Taiwan Strait to devolve into any kind of conflict. Nothing's changed about our one China policy. Nothing's changed about the fact that we don't support Taiwan independence. Uh, and nothing's changed about the fact that we don't want to see the status quo change unilaterally and certainly not by force. China had warned the U.S. about increasing its military presence in the region. The Philippines says the exercises with the U.S. military are not meant toward any country. It's just to bolster, bolster their defenses. And Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman has a new assignment. According to a U.S. official, Sherman will be leading the diplomatic response to the Pentagon document leak. The State Department says they will be continuing to engage with allies and reassure them of the U.S.'s commitment to safeguarding intelligence. In the meantime, the Pentagon continues to express concerns about this leak. High-ranking officials believe it poses a, quote, a very serious risk to national security. Scripps News has not independently verified the authenticity of the documents that have surfaced online, but they purport to contain sensitive information concerning the war in Ukraine, as well as American efforts to spy on both enemies and allies. Scripps News national security correspondent Sasha Engber has been examining dozens of these documents. She joins us now with what her sources in U.S. intelligence are saying about this leak. I was told by a source that sometimes classified information ends up on gaming platforms and that is certainly what appears to have happened here before it then spread across social media. Now I've looked at 54 of these documents and the contents are concerning. Before Ukraine's spring offensive, a leak has left the U.S. intelligence community reeling. Top secret documents show Ukraine's air defense vulnerabilities, details of Russia's planned attacks, the infamous Wagner Group trying to buy weapons from NATO member Turkey, and how China may increase its aid to Russia if Ukraine strikes deep in Russia. Other documents show the U.S. spying on allies, with South Korean officials concerned about a U.S. request for ammunition and Israel's Mossad encouraging protests against judicial reforms. Some documents are marked T.S. No Foreign, meant only for Americans, and some date back to just days ago. These leaked documents started to appear sometime late last year and early this year on a very small Discord server. Eric Toller, a researcher with Scripps News partner Bellingcat, has been in touch with teenagers who were in this gaming channel on the Discord messaging platform. They told Toller that only a fraction of the classified documents shared there have gone public, and now the channel has been shut down. There were hundreds and hundreds of these leaked, classified, secret, top secret documents posted in this tiny, tiny Discord channel. Of a few dozen people. Um, of those, a fraction of these were posted onto some other Discord channels, but there are still hundreds that have not seen the light of day. Toller says the teenagers believed the original poster was an adult who was just showing off. He didn't do this to boost Russia. He shared these documents to sh to make his friends impressed with him. <laughs> that was his motivation, and nothing, no geopolitical motives. No ideology, as far as I know, from talking to the people who've seen this document as they were coming in in real time on the Discord channel. It was just him trying to impress his buddies. And, and a lot of his friends didn't even think they were real. The leaker is thought to be an American insider, according to current and former intelligence sources who spoke to Scripps News. An investigation is focused on the Defense Department's J-2 Directorate for Intelligence. I would be surprised if someone's not identified within a month. That's because sources say that when a U.S. intelligence officer accesses a file, the activity is commonly logged. These leaked documents appear to have been printed and folded, and printing also typically requires a registered personal code, according to the sources. But for now, retired special agent Peter Lapp, who focused on espionage and counterintelligence at the FBI, says more classified documents could surface. Until they're identified then and, and at least taken offline until the Bureau can conduct its investigation, uh, it's possible that this individual remains in access and still has access to classified information. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov denied any involvement by Moscow. And Lapp says a connection to Russia's intelligence services seems unlikely. If you had a relationship with, with the Russian intelligence service, you would provide this information clandestinely and, and you would minimize the public exposure. And I think the way this was done certainly suggests to me that this is not someone who already has a relationship with the Russian intelligence services. Some of the files were doctored to lower counts of Russians killed in action, 
and to raise Ukrainians. Officials in Kyiv accused Russia of making alterations. For now, there are intelligence officers who fear that U.S. human sources may be in danger. Certain methods used to spy on Russia could end. Future operations may be threatened. Sasha Ingber, Scripps News, Washington. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, do almond, soy, rice, and hemp drinks qualify as milk? Well, the FDA wants you to weigh in on the great dairy debate. We'll have the details when Scripps News Live comes back. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. Checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize, making it dangerously easy to become a victim. Someone got my social security number, made a driver's license, and tried to buy a car in my name. Felt really devastating, frightened, because I had no control. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone used my information to open up bank accounts in my name. It was terrifying, not knowing what was out there and what had been opened. But protecting your identity can be easy with LifeLock, a leader in identity theft protection. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, especially ones you may miss by simply checking your accounts or credit. If there's an issue, LifeLock will alert you. There was a big yes button and there was a big no button. So I clicked, that's not me, and LifeLock took it from there. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. I don't know what I would have done without my restoration specialist. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds, personal expenses, and coverage for lawyers and experts if needed. With the million-dollar protection package, I know LifeLock has me covered. It can be dangerously easy to steal your identity, but now it's easy to help protect yourself. I realize identity theft can happen to anybody, so that's why I signed up for LifeLock. Join the millions of people already protected by LifeLock, and for a limited time, save 25% with promo code 25 today. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call 800-301-9328 or visit LifeLock.com slash 25 today and use promo code 25 today to save Save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned, too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide free with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax free and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide. 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. All right, I've got a question for you right here. Can soy, oat, or almond drinks be considered milk? 
while the Food and Drug Administration is suggesting that they can. The FDA is issuing draft guidance that says the plant-based beverages don't claim to be from dairy animals and consumers aren't confused about it. The agency is recommending clear labels on the plant sources and voluntary nutrition labels that specify when the drinks aren't as nutritious as dairy milk. Now, the public can comment on this draft guideline through April 23rd. Joining us now is Clay Detlefson. He is the Senior Vice President for Regulatory and Environmental Affairs at the National Milk Producers Federation. So, Clay, let's go to begin with the Federation's position on this guidance. Why shouldn't these well, drinks be well. called milk? First off, I want to thank you for having me here today. It's a pleasure. Um, why shouldn't they be able to be called milk? Because there's a process by which one can uh, identify the common and usual name of, of a food, and the plant-based uh, food manufacturers have not been following uh, that process in violation of FDA's written rules and regulations. So uh, what is behind the timing here? I mean, I feel like this is kind of all coming, uh, you know, to a head now. Why do you think the FDA is taking this step? How big of a threat are plant-based drinks? They're not a threat. We're, we're happy to have them in the marketplace. We'll compete with them, uh, and that's fine. But this has been an issue that's been going on for decades. The National Milk Producers Federation actually sued the Food and Drug Administration back in the 70s for failing to enforce its rules regarding uh, labeling of foods that have a standard of identity. Um, in the last 10 years or so, the, we've stepped it up. We were very well aware that there's a lot of uh, misperceptions in the consumer community about what these plant-based imitators were. And a lot of folks, unfortunately, thought that the nutritional uh, quality of the plant-based beverages was superior to or equal to dairy, and that's anything but the case. Well, how do you think this is going to play out? I mean, how do you think this is going to affect consumers at the end of the day? Do you think this is going to have a massive effect on consumers? Well, we're hoping that consumers are finally getting the fact that the plant-based beverages are nutritionally inferior, um, and we want that to be disclosed. So we're, we're pleased about that aspect, but the way the Food and Drug Administration is going about it is wrong, uh, and we will be filing extensive comments with the agency prior to the deadline. And just so people understand, you know, the position of the dairy industry at the end of the day, tell us about milk sales in general. Has the dairy industry been on an upward tra trajectory, maybe a downward trajectory? What kind of effect do you believe this is going to have on the dairy industry as a whole? Fluid milk sales have been declining for decades. It had nothing to do with these plant-based imitators coming into the marketplace. Uh, things were trending down for a long time. Water has replaced some milk consumption, and there's countless other products that are in the marketplace that uh, people can choose from. And again, we're fine with consumers having options. We just want to make sure they know what they're getting and they're not getting a nutritional product. So overall, fluid milk sales have been on the decline for a long period of time. But when you look at total dairy sales, we, we're growing and we've continued to grow for a number of years. It's just shifted from you know, the different products that are uh, within the dairy offerings. So the way I understand it is according to Nielsen IQ, cow's milk sales are actually far greater than sales for non-dairy beverages. Is that the truth? And with everything that you had just mentioned, do you think there is a concern that these drinks, at the end of the day, will replace dairy milk? No, I don't think it's going to happen at all. The plant-based milk alternatives are a small fraction of what overall dairy sales are. I believe a report just came out uh, today or in the last few days, and it shows that the plant-based uh, beverages, the milk alternatives, if you will, declined 2% over the last year, and um, that's that's a trend. We've, we've been noticing that for a while. So your organization rejects the FDA's conclusion that milk is a common name. How do you want to see this play out if you had your druthers? <laughs> I've got extensive comments already written. Basically, I want the Food and Drug Administration to follow the law. Congress made some determinations in the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act as to uh, how products need to be labeled and what would be a misbranded product. 
We want FDA to follow uh, what Congress put forth in the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, not rewrite a congressional act. Also, the rules are fairly clear, and FDA's own rules are very clear, and FDA can't rewrite their rules with a guidance document. So they have to follow the process and procedure. Um, it's just wrong to do otherwise. It's not the way things work. But in the meantime, the public is allowed to weigh in until April 23rd. How do you think that's going to factor into this? Well, so far, we've been monitoring the FDA docket where comments are being accepted. And um, we're very pleased that there are a substantial number of uh, comments in the docket that understand National Milk's perspective and they support it. Uh, they don't think these products should be labeled milk, and they do want that nutritional inferiority disclosed. So I, I think we're going to see a change here, um, and National Oak's going to press hard for FDA to do the right thing. All right. Clay Delipson is the Senior Vice President of the National Milk Producers. Clay, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, we're going to be introducing you to the World War II veteran who risked his life for our country but return home feeling that his service was in vain. Nothing changed, nothing changed, nothing changed. Nothing changed. It was just as bad as, as when I left. Now, nearly 80 years later, his bravery is getting the recognition it deserves. We'll have that story for you next. Are you on Medicaid and Medicare? The U.S. government recently announced that 12.2 million citizens are eligible for additional benefits beyond what they received from the original Medicare or Medicaid. These benefits may include $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit, plus you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. It's easy to see if you qualify. Call Go Medicare at 800 7 1-8-0-4-1-4. And see if you're one of over 12 million who may qualify. For $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. Plus, you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. This call is 100% free with no obligation to enroll. At 800-718-0414. Are you on Medicaid and Medicare? The U.S. government recently announced that 12.2 million citizens are eligible for additional benefits beyond what they received from the original Medicare or Medicaid. These benefits may include $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. Plus, you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. Call Go Medicare at 800-718-0414. If you have recently turned 65, you may be able to enroll in a new plan today that may include benefits like $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. This call is 100% free with no obligation to enroll. So call today at 800-718-0414. That's 800-718-0414. Sure, you should teach him to ride a bike. Then, use Greenlight and teach him how to invest in bikes. Teach him to be smart about money, and he'll go far. Super far! Oh, hey, Mom! Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket, and this... This is a filet mignon. For a limited time, our burger perfection flight comes with 20 big, juicy burgers, all for just $79.99, plus free shipping. Get it today at omahasteaks.com slash TV. This is burger perfection guaranteed. I was just going through so many like life changes. I was having so much anxiety. You get to this like breaking point of being like, I need help. At forhers.com, take a free online consultation to see if treatment might be right for you. My medication makes everything else possible. When what's happening in the world hits home. What strikes me is how many children are here. 
And when reporting the news matters the most, Scripps News reports. Tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. A World War II veteran is finally getting an honor fit for an American hero. Roy Caldwell was a Buffalo soldier who made a significant impact on the battlefield. But the 100-year-old, along with other troops in his unit, didn't receive the honors they deserved after returning home. Jada Williams of Scripps News Tampa shows us how two cities have been righting those wrongs. This is the board that kind of we put together an exposition board of a lot of his photos. Behind every photo, article, and plaque, Roy J. Caldwood has countless vivid memories. I should tell you about how um, I was responsible for over 50 Germans peacefully surrendering to the platoon I was with. Do you want to hear that story? The 100-year-old World War II vet served as a Buffalo soldier in the 92nd Infantry. A Buffalo soldier is the term for all black soldiers in the war during segregation. While Caldwood accomplished more than most could imagine while in the war. And the nun said to us, we wanted you to see what you have done. Now these children can go back home because of what you've done. Now you like that. True story. Caldwell didn't quite receive a hero's welcome back home. Nothing changed, nothing changed, nothing changed. Nothing changed. It was just as bad as, as when I left. I said, here it is in Italy. A lot of the Ital Italians have said to me, don't go home, don't go home, stay here. You are one of us. Now his contribution to our country is finally getting the deserved recognition. April 5th is now Roy J. Caldwood Day in the city of Tampa, a way to say thanks to the American hero. And every time I thought it couldn't be any better, it got, got better. The crowning part was when they told me that they're, they're giving me a date on their calendar. Untold stories of a black World War II veteran are finally coming to light and finally getting recognition. Next for him, an honor in his home state of New York. And that was Jada Williams reporting there for us. Right now, President Biden is en route to Northern Ireland and slated to touch down in Belfast just after 4 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be explaining what the president is hoping to accomplish with this trip in a live report. Your next hour of Scripps News Live is right after this. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser. And did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-760-7793. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week, and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-760-7793. That's 800-760-7793. President Biden on the move at this hour, headed to Northern Ireland. You're looking at video right here of him boarding Air Force One at Joint Base Andrews this morning. The president's trip will mark the 25th anniversary of a key peace agreement. 
Thank you so much for staying with us on this Tuesday afternoon. Always great to see you. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. So before the president's arrival in Belfast, a small group of people set fire to a police car, which was monitoring a demonstration marking the anniversary of the 1916 Easter uprising, which was part of the Irish Revolution. Now at the protest, organizers called for an end to oppression of Irish Republicans. White House correspondent Haley Bull has been covering the president's trip for us from Washington. And Haley, it's now been a quarter of a century since this Good Friday agreement ended violence, but apparently it looks like there's plenty more work to do. What more can you tell us about the president's trip and what he's hoping to accomplish? Good afternoon, Veronica. We know the White House says the president is comfortable making this trip, having looked forward to it for quite some time. And it's timed around, as you mentioned, the anniversary, the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. The White House is expecting the president to mark the progress since then, as well as focus on economic potential. Now, during this visit, he'll meet with the prime ministers of both the UK and Ireland, give a joint address to what is Ireland's joint session of parliament, uh, and go back to his family roots in Ireland, where he tours the cathedral. But as you mentioned, as he visits, there's also a focus on sustaining progress, as there's also been signs of conflict and division that still remained in Ireland. Some have demonstrated that U.S. brokered deal this week. Uh, and as the Belfast government is suspended after disagreements on the Brexit trade agreements, it also comes on the heels of the Windsor agreements earlier this year, an agreement reached between the EU and U.K. on Northern Ireland. And this is part of the priority for the president. Listen. Make sure the Irish Accords and the Windsor Agreement stay in place to keep the peace. That's the, that's the main thing. And it looks like we're going to keep your fingers crossed. Now, one reporter in Ireland describes the peace there as political progress, but the issue still being what he calls political deadlock. Some are watching to see if this visit from President Biden moves the needle. Listen really haven't had much political progress and much uh, of a political administration in Northern Ireland since 2016. So uh, it would be good. And, you know, all that, as I say, stems from Brexit and the implications of that. So it would be nice if we could get, uh, and, and President Biden will be doing his best to encourage our politicians to talk to each other, to get back into government. Uh, and that's what we could do with 25 years on from the Good Friday Agreement is a bit of stability. Now, this, of course, continues a history of U.S. presidents visiting Ireland. But as President Biden marks the progress in peace in the 25th anniversary of that historic agreement, again, some looking to him to help move forward the political conflict that still remains, Veronica. All right, Haley Bull live for us from the White House. Haley, thank you so much. Well, people across the U.S. right now are bracing for a decision regarding the abortion drug Mifeprestone. The drug could be banned this week if an opinion from a federal judge in Texas is allowed to take effect. National political correspondent Joe St. George explains what's at stake here and why this case is likely heading for the Supreme Court. One of the biggest legal and political questions in our country right now is what will the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals say about Mifepristone? the drug most often used by providers in medication abortions in the U.S. Right now, the drug, which often goes by Mifeprex, remains in a state of legal limbo after Judge Matthew Kaczmarek ruled last week that it should be banned effective this Friday, believing the drug is unsafe. A judge in Washington state issued a competing ruling on the exact same day last Friday that the drug is safe and should be continued to be used. The legal confusion has prompted the Department of Justice to appeal to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, and depending on on what the court says, the Department of Justice will likely appeal to the Supreme Court. The Fifth Circuit's expected to weigh in by Friday. To be clear, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals is traditionally a conservative-leaning appellate court, and judges there will have a key question to answer. Do they ban the drug until they schedule more formal hearings, more formal oral arguments? 
or do they allow the drug to continue to be used until those formal proceedings can occur? As a practical matter, this case is on a crash course with the Supreme Court. Justices will be confronted with the same questions as the Fifth Circuit, and it would be the court's most consequential abortion-related ruling since the Dobbs decision last summer. As a reminder, this matters because banning mifepristone would impact conservative-leaning states and Democratic-leaning states alike. However, a ban on this drug would not mean the end of medication abortions in the United States. There are other prescriptions that providers could use. However, as the World Health Organization and other organizations have documented, typically those drugs carry with it. More side effects. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Coming up next in your 3 p.m. hour of Scripps News Live, Michelle Brancher Goodwin from the University of California, Irvine, is going to join us to discuss the DOJ's appeal of the Texas abortion ruling and how some states have already been taking action. Again, that is straight ahead at 3.15 p.m. Eastern. Our city is heartbroken heartbroken for the loss of friends and loved ones. We must work together to end this plague of gun violence on our country. Enough. Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg pushing for action and accountability after yesterday's deadly shooting inside of a bank, which hit close to home for him. Five people were killed and the mayor called two of the victims, Deanna Eckert and Tommy Elliott, close friends. Now, within the past hour, we've learned new details about the shooting. Right now, the rookie officer who was shot in the head is still in critical condition. Louisville's police chief says the AR-15 used in the attack was legally purchased on April 4th from a local gun store. The suspect, identified as a bank employee, live streamed that attack on Instagram. Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, says investigators have reviewed the live stream, but it has been removed from the site. Now, this afternoon, police are expected to release body camera video from responding officers. And straight ahead at 1.40 Eastern, right here on Scripps News Live, Democratic Representative Morgan McGarvey will be joining us. He represents the 3rd District of Kentucky, where yesterday's deadly bank shooting occurred, and he's going to be sharing political reaction to the tragedy of what lawmakers are planning to do next. In the meantime, the mother of a six-year-old who shot his teacher is now charged with felony child neglect. Deja Taylor is also being charged with recklessly leaving a loaded gun around a child. One of her attorneys said that she'll be turning herself in later this week. 25-year-old Abby Werner was shot in the hand and chest at Rich Neck Elementary School, and she was hospitalized for two weeks. She had four surgeries. Zwerner is suing the school system for $40 million. She claims that school officials ignored warnings about the child having a weapon on that day. Gun violence has been impacting people across the country. Nearly two weeks ago, a deadly shooting rocked Nashville when a former student opened fire inside of a private Christian school. The violence prompted Nashville students to rally for change. Kelsey Gibbs with Scripps News Nashville spoke with two high school students who are behind one of the rallies. This shouldn't be political. It should be just an issue of safety. Hume Fogg High School seniors Eva Tatum and Maya Patel say it's hard to enjoy their last year of high school with so much going on in Nashville. It's very difficult for us to have a chance to enjoy senior year and have a chance to be normal teenagers when there's people, there are people that are dying that are younger than us. The Covenant School shooting on April 27th happened just 20 miles from their campus, too close to ignore. In senior year, I. Nobody was really expecting this. You know, school shootings happen all the time now, but it wasn't, we weren't expecting it to be so close to home. Since the shooting, many students, educators, and parents have rallied at the Capitol to honor the lives of the six victims by advocating to end gun violence. Eva and Maya wanted to do the same. Maya said, why don't we have a rally? And I said, okay, let's do it. Let's make it all of Nashville. Let's get all of the schools involved. They planned a large rally for Thursday and even got their teachers involved. They're watching our voices yeah. be kind of shoved down a little bit. And the teachers were really there to make sure that we were heard as students because student voices need to be heard. And we need you to make the change for us. Rain or shine, people showed up by the hundreds. I know that showing up did something because we are showing up, having people there, having people in the Capitol. Like, you could hear the chanting inside from, like, the hall. And that was really powerful. Even though there was no legislation passed these students advocated for, they still consider the rally 
a success. I feel like if we keep going like this and we keep telling them like we need change, something will happen. Something has got to happen because we've got representatives in there that want to help us yeah. and they want to see change just as much as we do. In Nashville, I'm Kelsey Gibbs reporting. Dozens of Ukrainian children reunited with their families after they were taken by Russian forces. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, one teen and his mother share their experience. Is your teen addicted to social media? Are they showing signs of depression or eating disorders? Listen up, this could concern you. A whistleblower has reported that their platform was knowingly exposing children to dangerous topics and posts. The whistleblower claims that this algorithm is also causing body image issues, eating disorders, and more. What's worse is that social media company was shown the research and had done nothing about it. Turns out they've known about it for years. If your child has shown signs of suicide risk, mental health issues, and or an eating disorder, you could be entitled to compensation. We're representing other families just like yours. Do not delay. Morgan & Morgan for the people. Call 855-800-6927. 855-800-6927. That's 855-800-6927. Call now. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. And checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there's an issue. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit lifelock.com slash 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. A four-year investigation uncovers approximately 80 years of child sexual abuse and torture at the hands of the Archdiocese in Baltimore. In the wake of the devastating report, Scripps News, Scripps News Baltimore, and the Baltimore Sun are hosting an important conversation, joined by local officials and holding space for stories from survivors. Sins of the Fathers, Abuse and Betrayal in Baltimore. Wednesday night at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan has subpoenaed FBI Director Christopher Wray looking for more information amid allegations that the Bureau attempted to develop sources to uncover extremism in Catholic churches. Congressional correspondent Nate Reed is live for us in Washington. Nate, what is the controversy here? Can you explain it to us and why Jordan might be issuing a subpoena? Well, Veronica, this first came to light earlier this year when Jim Jordan raised concerns over this potentially leaked memo from the Richmond field office of the FBI, which allegedly uh, showed uh, documents that the FBI was trying to investigate potential extremism within the Catholic Church. Jim Jordan raised a red flag over that. He said that was something that he uh, found concerning. Republicans as a whole have kind of chalked this up to what they view as some uh, uh, government retaliation for people uh, conducting the free exercise of religion. So he raised a red flag on that. He asked the FBI for more information. He says that the FBI's information that they sent voluntarily was not sufficient. So now he's taking the step of subpoenaing them and that's because he said some of those documents which the FBI voluntarily sent over left him with more questions than answers. I want to read a portion of his justification for this uh, subpoena now. He said the FBI expressed an interest in leveraging existing sources and or initiating type 5 assessments to develop new sources with the placement and access to report on suspicious activity within the Catholic Church. That of course concerned the chairman uh, and given that he did not feel he received sufficient information on it.
he took the extraordinary step of sending the FBI a subpoena to try and get more information. Yeah, what has the government been saying about this so far, Nate? What, what has the government's response been to this probe? Well, when this was raised, uh, and this uh, has been kind of a, con uh, a very conspicuous thought, especially among conservative circles on Capitol Hill, when this was first raised to FBI Director Chris Wray, he expressed disgust. He said that it was not a proper memo, that this was an investigation in process, which should have never occurred. Here's how we responded to a question about it from Senator Lankford uh, back in March. Well, first, let me say that when I first learned of the piece, I was aghast. As you should be. Uh, and we took steps uh, immediately to uh, withdraw it uh, and remove it from FBI systems. Uh, it does not reflect FBI standards. We do not conduct investigations based on religious affiliation or practices, full stop. Uh, we have also now ordered our inspection division to take a look at how this happened and try to figure out how we can make sure something like this doesn't happen again. I will note it was a, a, a product by a one field office, uh, you know, which is, we, of course, we have scores and scores right. of these products. And when we found out about it, we took action. And Veronica, we've reached out to the FBI. They told us in a statement the FBI has received the subpoena. The FBI recognizes the importance of congressional oversight and remains fully committed to cooperating with Congress's oversight request, consistent with its constitutional and statutory responsibilities. So though Chris Ray tried to cast this as an isolated incident, members of Congress still want more information. The FBI says it will provide them with the information that they've now sent a subpoena to request. All right, Nathaniel Reed, live for us in Washington. Nate, thanks so much. Last week, the Maryland Attorney General released a much-anticipated report documenting child sexual abuse in the Baltimore Archdiocese. Now, in the wake of that report, Scripps News Baltimore and the Baltimore Sun will be airing an intimate conversation with survivors and community leaders. I certainly have tried to communicate with... Um, with parishes and parishioners across the archdiocese uh, because I want them to know that this has come out, that an apology and um, that apology and prayer while good is not enough. And so the third part is called action. You can join Scripps News tomorrow night for Sins of the Fathers, Abuse and Betrayal in Baltimore. That airs tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on Scripps News. Coming up in this hour of Scripps News Live, how much the White House is spending to make sure that vaccines keep up with new COVID variants, plus why scientists have been conflicted about where and how the virus emerged. That's next. For veterans recovering from the wounds of war, supporting one another is a lifesaver. I served in the United States Army in Vietnam, and that's when I stepped on a landmine that resulted in the traumatic amputation of both of my legs and my left arm above the elbow. I was alive, but I didn't know what the rest of my life had in store for me. Multiple deployments have caused a huge problem with those that served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's difficult for them to come back and adjust to civilian life. There were moments of frustration. You can't do this anymore. You can't go here anymore. I absolutely felt like I lost my purpose. I was looking at a long period where I wasn't going to be able to do anything for myself. I just didn't want to be here. Many veterans feel abandoned or alone till DAV steps into their life. For 100 years, DAV, Disabled American Veterans, has been supporting veterans and their families in their time of need by helping them receive the care and benefits they've earned. But your help is vital to keeping this promise alive. The biggest struggle is spending the rest of your life in a wheelchair. DAV showed me it was okay to be a disabled veteran. The Disabled American Veterans made me feel useful again. DAV came in when I was still flat on my back and got me through that rough state that I was in. When you call or go online with your pledge of just $19 a month, we'll send you this DAV blanket as a way you can share your support. If I can reach out and share with other veterans what I've been through, that's a grand opportunity in DAV. It can really make a difference in the lives of many of these veterans. Please call or go online to helpdav.org and donate now. They've given their all for us. Please open your heart and give what you can to them. 
There are so many more disabled veterans who still need your support. Please call now or give at helpdav.org. Thank you and God bless you. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence. With crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers. The most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. After three years, the COVID national emergency has ended. President Biden signed the bipartisan congressional resolution to bring the national emergency to a close a month before it was supposed to expire. Now, the president had publicly opposed the resolution, but he did say that he wouldn't veto it, especially after the Senate voted 68 to 23 to pass the resolution. And that's when the president assured senators that he would sign it. In the meantime, Project Next Gen will be succeeding Operation Warp Speed. It is a $5 billion program used to accelerate the development of vaccines and treatments for the mutating COVID virus. It all comes as welcome news to public health officials who had warned the administration that existing vaccines and therapies were losing their effectiveness. Key parts of the new COVID initiative still need to be worked out before the launch. And the COVID national emergency might be over now, but where and how the virus emerged three years ago is still puzzling. Science and health correspondent Lindsay Thies tries to get to the bottom of the origin of COVID. It's been more than three years since the COVID-19 outbreak began in Wuhan, China. But a key mystery remains. Where did the virus come from? Scientists have focused on five clues. Clue number one, early cases at the Huanan wholesale seafood market. The first cases that were known were people who had been in or worked in or, to, or visited um, a market where they sell, you know, all sorts of food um, in the middle of Wuhan. Because Chinese authorities quickly closed the market and sanitized it, scientists researching how the virus spread did not have much to go on. But they did have clue number two, genetic material. Scientists collected it from animals at the market known to carry viruses like COVID. There was some genetic data uh, collected three years ago um, that was uploaded to an international genetic database. There's DNA from that animal called a raccoon dog, which is known to be very susceptible to SARS viruses. SARS viruses include SARS-CoV-2. That's the name of the virus that causes COVID-19. What the, the sequences do not show is a raccoon dog infected with the um, COVID virus. But what they do show is uh, raccoon dogs in the same place where there was a lot of uh, COVID virus collected. Clue number three, the proximity of the initial outbreak to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. There's a major laboratory in, in Wuhan that studies coronaviruses. This is a very high level 
lab and um, worked with uh, American scientists and other international scientists. We know that scientists there were genetically engineering coronaviruses under seriously inadequate safety conditions. And we know that viruses escape from labs all the time. Clue number four, the structure of the virus itself. Many viruses use their spike proteins to bind and enter human cells. The former head of the CDC says COVID spike proteins seemed tailor-made to infect people. It looked like this virus was engineered. Clue number five, the close relatives to COVID in nature. Last year, scientists discovered decades-old coronaviruses found in cave bats in Laos could enter human cells. The spike protein from one of the bat viruses and COVID-19 spike protein look almost identical. So, five key clues to consider. The market, genetic material, the lab, COVID structure, and natural relatives. Sifting through the evidence, some scientists conclude the virus somehow escaped from the Wuhan laboratory. There is no smoking gun proving a laboratory origin hypothesis, but the growing body of circumstantial evidence suggests a gun that is at very least warm to the touch. Other researchers conclude the virus crossed from animal to human naturally, possibly in the Huanan market. There is evidence of a natural uh, animal spillover and um, there really isn't um, much or any of a, of a laboratory leak at this point. Most U.S. intelligence agencies have favored the natural origin, though the FBI and Department of Energy support the lab leak hypothesis. Those U.S. agencies that lean towards um, a lab leak or believe it's more likely that, that the SARS-CoV-2 virus came from a lab either express low confidence or moderate confidence. In terms of politics, polling suggests two-thirds of Americans believe there was a lab leak. It's a view Republican politicians have largely embraced, while Democratic lawmakers mostly espouse the natural animal-to-human hypothesis. The, the process, unfortunately, was politicized from the very beginning. That includes the role of China. The international community has continuously criticized China for secrecy and impeding investigations into the origin of the virus. The Chinese government, seems to me, has been doing its best to try to thwart and obfuscate. We continue to call on China to be transparent in sharing data and to conduct the necessary investigations and share the results. China says it's been, quote, open and transparent in the search for the virus's origins. Its leaders recently renewed an unfounded theory alleging the virus came from a U.S. military base. The politics and bad blood surrounding the issue, scientists say, will continue to make solving the mystery all the more difficult. Lindsay Thies, Scripps News. A Ukrainian teen and his mother speaking out after he was rescued from a Russian camp. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, he describes what life was like. We'll be right back. You're looking pretty good, Mr. Johnson, but we need to take some x-rays today. That's uh -huh. Yes, x-rays are expensive, but the front desk said you recently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits that now cover today's x-rays and cleaning costs. Uh -huh. okay. Well, Medicare Parts A and B do not cover your routine dental coverage like cleanings, fillings, or x-rays. <laughs> yes, you have a Medicare Part C plan commonly called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Part C plans cover everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Wow, that's great that my plan includes dental coverage that helps pay for these costs. Yes, Mr. Johnson. A Medicare Part C plan could include dental coverage that pays for routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, dental x-rays, fillings, tooth extractions, root canals, dentures, implants, and crowns. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. You don't get a plan with these benefits automatically, so it's always good to call to see if there's a plan with extra benefits available in your zip code. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans available with additional benefits that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. In fact, 24 million Medicare beneficiaries do not have any dental coverage. 
Here's the good news. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. So call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-614-5203. 800-614-5203. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. On the stories that will shape each day. There's a new study that might make you feel a little bit better. So you can get on with yours. Morning Rush. Weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News. One thirty p.m. on the East Coast. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. Great to see you today. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. It is time now to get you caught up on the day's top stories. President Biden on his way to Northern Ireland right now. He boarded Air Force One at Joint Base Andrews this morning for his four-day trip. The president plans to mark 25 years since the Good Friday Agreement, which helped end much of the political turmoil in the region. He also plans to address Ireland's parliament. In Chicago, the city is now set to host the 2024 Democratic National Convention. It beat out finalists Atlanta and New York City. President Biden says Chicago is a great choice because it represents the party's diversity. The Democratic National Convention is scheduled for August 19th through the 22nd. Republicans will be holding their convention next year in Milwaukee. Dozens of children now back in Ukraine after they were held against their will in Russia. A rescue organization says 31 Ukrainian children arrived in Kyiv on Saturday. Deportations of young Ukrainians have been a growing issue since Russian forces started their invasion last February. Ukraine's UN ambassador reports Russia took more than 19,000 kids from their families or orphanages. So the inner workings of the Russian camps where Ukrainian children have been held have largely been a secret until now. Scripps News correspondent Jason Bellini spoke with a teenager and his mother about the lies and the horrible conditions surrounding one camp. The rescue took days over thousands of miles in multiple border crossings. 31 Ukrainian children finally freed from Russian controlled camps. Ukraine estimates Russia continues to detain around 20,000 illegally deported children. Aliona Baron and Irina Shevtsova, two mothers from Kherson, came to Kyiv for the reunion. Six months ago, they sent their children to a free camp in Russian-occupied Crimea for what they thought would be two weeks. Why did you agree to send your children to the summer camp? First, he wanted to, says Shevtsova. In Kherson, we live in an area where there was constant shelling. I told my son I was afraid to send him, and he said the school's director is waiting, and you just need to give him the power of attorney. My daughter also wanted to, says Baron. But two weeks turned into six months held against their will in these camps. The main activity, pro-Russian indoctrination. When they weren't returned on time, I started to worry, says Shevtsova. I started calling. They told me that due to the hostilities in Kherson, they can't be returned. Scripps News followed the mothers to the rendezvous point arranged by the organizations leading the rescues. Ten-year-old Kira and 13-year-old Bodan were exhausted from their five-day journey, but finally safe. Going home soon. We met up with Bodan the next day. He says he was shocked when he first realized the camp was not like what his school director promised. What was the camp like? There were about a thousand children there when we arrived. It was very bad food. We had two showers and two toilets for 50 people, Bodan says. He says he's worried for the Ukrainian children the Russians still hold there. When we were taken, there were 15 children left in the camp, he says. Some of them have no parents. Some have parents in prison. My friend, when we were leaving, got news from the counselors that the ones who stayed would be adopted. Those adoptions are war crimes, says Katerina Rachevska, a lawyer for a Kyiv human rights organization. I'm sure that Russians would like to use our children like a mean, like an instrument. As bargaining chips? Yes, exactly. Because Ukraine has this duty to repatriate 
all children. So the international community, close relatives of these children, parents, they will force Ukraine to cooperate with Russia. And Russia can set conditions. Rashevska says getting the older children out is especially urgent because when they turn 18, the Russians will enlist them to fight. These boys will be transferred as cannon fodder against their proper nation. Transferred to be cannon fodder, to be yes. part of the military. Has that happened? Yes, Crimea occupied by Russians since 2014. And now we know that uh, men who were children since the beginning of the occupation. They were transferred to this so-called special military operation, and now they are unfortunately killed. Jason Bellini, Scripps News, Kyiv, Ukraine. Since the start of the Russian invasion, more than 11 million Ukrainian refugees have left their homes to cross the border into Poland. Now, according to Poland's EU representative, nearly 90% of the refugees are women and children. A United Nations report says more than 1.5 million Ukrainian refugees are now living in Poland and more than 3.5 million people have gone to other European nations. The owner of a store located just steps away from yesterday's deadly bank shooting says the violence is becoming all too common. The older you get, we realize that it's a very evolving, changing world and you kind of get numb to it. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, what's pushing her to rally around her community and just keep going. Also, Democratic Representative Morgan McGarvey will join us from Kentucky to share political reaction to the tragedy and what lawmakers are planning to do next. We'll be right back. Hey, Caleb, what's going on? Homework. I'm supposed to learn how to cook a souffle. Ooh, French. Impressive. Oui, vous devriez l'apprendre. Ça vous fait paraître plus intelligent. I have no clue what you're saying. Yeah, I said that you should learn French because it makes you sound smart. <laughs> I got you. You know what else is smart, Alex? Donating to Shriners Hospitals for Children. I saw you say that. And you know what? You're right. Just think what it would be like if people didn't support Shriners Hospitals for Children every month. I don't even want to think about it. I know so many kids whose lives are completely different because of the specialized care Shriners Hospitals for Children provides. Yeah, like Sebastian, who can stand now? Yeah, and the best part is it's so easy to become a monthly supporter. All you need to do is call the number on your screen or go to loveshriners.org. Your support will make sure our amazing doctors and nurses keep helping kids like us who need them now and in the future. Hey, Alex, do you think I could try this part? Go for it, buddy. When you call right now and give $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, we'll send you your very own Love to the Rescue blanket as a reminder of all the kids you're helping every day. Your monthly support makes a huge difference for kids like us. So please, call now or go to loveshriners.org to give. On behalf of all the kids you're helping, Alec and I just want to say thank you. You got that right. Thank you so much. Please call the number on your screen or go to loveshriners.org with your monthly support right away. Your support shows you care too. Who needs pet insurance? Take Lucy. A leg sprain cost her mom $600 in vet bills. Butterbean's tiny sneezes turned into a $1,000 respiratory infection. Eddie ate a $4,000 sock. Pet insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company can help with vet bills for these guys and for your pets too, no matter what their age or breed. This coverage pays for things like emergencies, hospital stays, surgeries, even wellness with no lifetime limit on benefits. You can see any vet you like and get up to 100% reimbursement. So now your pets can get all the care they need to live a happy, healthy life. Because when a cutie like this needs to go to the vet, you'll want to be prepared. Help protect the pets you love with coverage from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company. Call or go online now for all the details. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. I got the groceries. You were just supposed to get diapers. 
Couldn't find them. Oh, you found your favorite cereal. Go back. I can't. We're kind of broke until payday. Well, diapers kind of can't wait. I'm getting the Empower app. Empower Cash Advance gives me up to $250 instantly. No late fees, interest, or credit checks. <laughs> Hurry back. No guarantees. Diapers are so hard to find. Get Empower Cash Advance up to $250 instantly. Download the Empower app today. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Attention. Recent studies have shown asbestos fibers and talcum powder may cause mesothelioma. Women who regularly used popular brands of talc-based powders such as Cashmere Bouquet, Johnson's Baby Powder, and Shower to Shower, and others may be at risk. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with mesothelioma and regularly used talc-based baby powder, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call Sokolov Law now at 1-800-816-8520 for your free legal consultation. That's 1-800-816-8520. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. Hundreds of people gathered last night at Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Louisville, Kentucky. They mourn the five people who were shot and killed at Old National Bank. Among them, 40-year-old Joshua Barrick. Nine others, including two police officers, were wounded. And one of the officers is in critical condition after being shot in the head. Louisville's mayor says his focus now will be to unify the city to move past what he is calling targeted acts of evil violence. And for one longtime Louisville business owner, it's going to be a challenge to return to normal again. Nancy Cox has the story. Carol Hampton estimates she's been doing business in downtown Louisville for more than 50 years. Very unreal. It's hard to wrap her head around it. She should be showing derby shoppers around. Instead, she's trying to make sense of the senseless. Because they were our friends, the people at the bank. And they shopped with me on lunch breaks. And the president bought his mother-in-law shoes from me. So sad. Sad, but to Carol, tragedies like this are no longer shocking. Our country as a whole has changed. You know, and I'm 66. My kids don't see it. They're 30s and 40s. But the older you get, we realize that it's a very evolving, changing world. And you kind of get numb to it. All that can be done, Carol says, is to keep the faith. She still has faith in her city. We went through the rioting and all the civil unrest and the burnings. And, but you, get, you, know, you just keep going because this is home. Congressman Morgan McGarvey represents Kentucky's 3rd District, which includes Louisville. Congressman, thank you so much for your time today. We do appreciate you being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, I understand, Congressman, that, that you knew one of the victims, Tommy Elliott, and, and had known him for years. So I wanted to go ahead and start right here by, by offering uh, our condolences uh, and to let you know that we're extremely sorry for your loss. I do want to ask you how this has impacted you, how this has affected your community, and what it now means to you in terms of taking action. Yeah, this, this is awful. Um, it, it's devastating. It, it's, you know, when we first got the news, you got that feeling of dread in your stomach that this was different, it was wrong, and, and then we found out it was a harsh shoot, a mass shooting, and then you start getting the names, and, and of course, this is Louisville. So people shouldn't be surprised that we know them. What, what I want people to know about Louisville is that we are the smallest big city in America. I, I call it Louisville Village. We really are one degree of separation away from everybody. When, when we say, where'd you go to school? We mean, where'd you go to high school? And I've known Tommy Elliott for years because we're one degree of separation away from everybody. My wife worked with his wife for a little time here in Louisville. Um, several of the other victims if I didn't know them, I have really good friends who were good friends of theirs as well, because that's who we are as a community. And and so because of that, of that community we have that's so tight and so close, this is going to be really, really hard. But I hope also that, that that closeness keeps us together and that we will be putting our arms around each other and lifting each other up uh, once the national news has, has moved on, that we're going to be here to help each other out for the, the weeks, months, and years to come. Again, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, 
let's go ahead and talk about the gun used here because police have announced that the shooter legally bought this gun. It was an AR-15. Uh, he did so a week ago. And the AR-15 is, is a weapon that's been used multiple times, multiple mass shootings. It was used in Uvalde, Texas. It was just recently used in Nashville in the Covenant School shooting. It's been used to, 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 to murder children, small children. You serve on the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. Congressman, what do you think should be done here? Can anything be done? We have to do something. Uh, because, look, I'm a person of faith, and if you're a person of faith, we do appreciate your prayers. We need them. Our community's hurting. But we've got to start having a policy conversation about what we can do to keep this from happening again. The AR-15 rifle that is used in this, which has been used in so many shootings, accounted for almost 25% of gun sales last year. It is a weapon of war. Uh, and we don't need weapons of war on our streets that are killing our people where they work, where they go see movies, where they play, where our kids go to school. And I think that we have to come together Democrats and Republicans and have an honest conversation about the damage this is doing to our country and to our communities. Yes, five people in Louisville lost their lives because they were shot with an AR-15. But the collateral damage is so much more than that. Uh, from the police officers who bravely saved lives, ran into the hail of gunfire, one of whom was in his fourth shift ever as a police officer following his field training officer shot in the head with an AR-15. He is still fighting right now. Um, all the people who responded to the scene, all the people who've taken care of him, the doctor this morning at the press conference who just almost broke down and said, I'm weary. My team is weary. We deal with this type of trauma far too often. Well, we need to step in on the policy side and limit this trauma, limit the collateral damage, try to help keep this from happening in a country where it's almost a unique occurrence. There was an, an assault weapons ban, a federal assault weapons ban, and it expired in 2004. It lapsed. Uh, it did show to be effective in reducing gun violence in the United States. What happened here? Why do you think it lapsed? Should it be reinstated? And is there a chance that it ever will be? Uh, I think I think we should make sure that we reinstate this and take weapons of war off of our street. I think we also have to do more. I think we need universal background checks. I think we need to address the mental health crisis in this country and recognize that there are people who are suffering. We've got to get more mental health supports out there and also have laws that help support the mental health like an extreme risk protection order or a crisis aversion rights retention law like I introduced in the state Senate when I was there in Kentucky, that you know, for people who are in crisis, who are in imminent danger of hurting themselves or someone else, that we give law enforcement the tools they need to temporarily remove a firearm, therefore keeping someone safe. And will it prevent everything? Not necessarily, but you know, it might prevent a mass shooting. It also might prevent the leading cause of gun death in this country, which is death by suicide. So I, I think We've got to come together, recognize that there are things we can and should do to keep people safe. Don't make this political. Make this about policy. Put people's lives first. Put public safety first. Put people and kids over guns. I want to go ahead and focus on policy for just a second, though, Congressman, and talk specifically about gun laws in the state of Kentucky. For, from what I understand, the state has the 13th highest rate of gun violence in America. And I do understand that laws have recently passed relaxing gun restrictions in your state, and they passed days before this shooting occurred. What do you have to say about that? No, I, I, again, look, I mean, we had a state legislature that was more focused on banning books and pronouns uh, and then also passed Kentucky to make it a sanctuary state for weapons. I, I think that there is more we can do and we, we've got to come together and do it. I think there's a state response. There are state and local laws that can and should be changed. For example, right now under Kentucky law, the weapon that was used in this awful, awful tragedy can be sold back through auction and be put back on the streets. Uh, that, that's unfathomable and it's unacceptable. Uh, so there's state and local laws that can change. And on the federal law, I think we need to do it too. For instance, if we're going to take weapons of war off of our streets, that needs to be a federal response. I'm sitting here in my district office in Louisville right now. I just came from City Hall. Uh, we are right across the river from another state. 
Uh, and so, you know, people could cross back and forth every day um, to go shopping or to go to work uh, both directions. And so that's where I think a federal law is also necessary. But do you believe, Congressman, because I know you're a Democrat and it's obvious to me where you stand on this issue, but what about Republicans? What about your Republican colleagues? Do you believe that there's a real chance for bipartisanship on this issue? And do you have confidence? Do you have confidence that things will change? Uh, look, I, I do. I am optimistic. I'm always going to be optimistic. I served in the minority every single day I was in the state Senate. I was minority leader of the state Senate for the last four years before getting elected to Congress. I worked daily with my colleagues on some really big things to try and make progress, even on the extreme risk protection order type law, the crisis aversion rights retention law I mentioned earlier. I worked with a constituent of mine who'd been shot 12 times in a mass shooting in Cincinnati but survived. I got a rural Republican lawmaker to come on as my co-sponsor, recognizing we've got to bring sides together to make this a solution that is for the American people that keeps our people safe. It's not a political issue. This public safety shouldn't be a political issue. Let's not make it one, but let's come up with the solutions that actually can work. Put the policies in place that give law enforcement the tools they need to make sure we are safe. Kentucky Congressman Morgan McGarvey from Louisville. Congressman, thank you so much for your time today. Again, my, my deepest condolences. Thank you very much. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, school administrators reporting a rise in dis discrimination. Up next, how political debates over critical race theory in schools have been impacting the students. Here's TV shark Robert Herchevec for Car Shield. I love cars and I also love great deals. That's why I'm such a fan of Car Shield. They have an amazing deal that helps protect you from the sky high cost of big auto repairs. The check engine light on your vehicle can come on at any time. If your car is out of warranty, an engine replacement can cost over $5,000. A new transmission, over $4,000. Even a new air conditioner can run over $1,500. If you suddenly have to pay those costs, it could really hurt your bottom line. Cost Shield administrators have paid for my claims over $5,000. Now, who does that? Cost Shield, you're the best. A plan that works. When your car or truck breaks down, you simply take it to the certified repair shop or dealer of your choice. Car Shield administrators take care of the rest. And Car Shield gives you VIP treatment. Plans through Car Shield include 24-hour roadside assistance, courtesy towing, and rental car options when your vehicle is being repaired. I did my due diligence. Car Shield is a deal that is just too good to pass up. In fact, Car Shield is America's number one auto protection company. Car Shield administrators have paid out over a billion dollars in claims and have protected millions of vehicles. Call now for a free quote. It's only a matter of time until your vehicle is going to need a repair. Say big with Car Shield. Call now for an instant free quote. Car Shield offers month to month plans for every budget. There are no long term contracts. Car Shield has coverage for vehicles with 5,000 to 150,000 miles. Car Shield experts are standing by now. The sooner you call, the sooner you can drive with peace of mind. Coverage through Car Shield is a deal that is just too good to pass up. If you want to save a lot of money on future auto repair bills, I recommend you call Car Shield now. Call 1 800 680 9870 or go to carshield.com. That's 1 800 680 9870. Call now. Is your teen addicted to social media? Are they showing signs of depression or eating disorders? Listen up. This could concern you. A whistleblower has reported that their platform was knowingly exposing children to dangerous topics and posts. The whistleblower claims that this algorithm is also causing body image issues, eating disorders, and more. What's worse is that social media company was shown the research and had done nothing about it. Turns out they've known about it for years. If your child has shown signs of suicide risk, mental health issues, and or an eating disorder, you could be entitled to compensation. We're representing other families just like yours. Do not delay. Morgan & Morgan for the people. Call 855-800-6927. 855-800-6927. That's 855-800-6927. Call now.
This is a show with range in the know. Today, we're going to talk about crypto in the now. Wild world of online real estate in the next. Weaponized robots are truly becoming a thing in our military. In the loop. Tonight at 9, 8 central, only on Scripps News. Schools are increasingly finding themselves at the center of a political battle, whether it's over critical race theory or the content found in textbooks. Now, principals report seeing more discrimination as well in their hallways. Dan Grossman reports from Aurora, Colorado. How you guys doing? You ready to play some volleyball? Yes, if you look up the word team in the dictionary, it will tell you it's a group of players forming one side in a competitive game or sport. Team A, over here. We're gonna have Julio, Josiah, and Jordan. Do you think your team's gonna win? We want to. Let's go, Ranger, let's go. But I'm going to say, maybe that's not the most accurate definition of the word team. There you go, Jordan. Because what go. the dictionary ignores is what that group does for people. When, since I started, I was kind of nervous. Including people like Julio Moreno. And now I get used to it. Julio is a junior with an intellectual disability at Rangeview High School in Aurora. Yeah. And today, you are about to see him grow before your eyes. It just feels like um, home in that, um, you know, every school has their issues and every school has their problems, but this school just feels like kids come together. A new study from UCLA shows 78% of principals reported LGBTQ plus students had been the target of hostile remarks from their classmates. 66% reported the same for black students and 50% reported Latino students had been the target of these remarks since 2018. The study found the highest instances of these attacks were in purple political districts where political tension was the highest. Context of heightened conflict has emboldened some students who might otherwise have been silent to amplify their voices and to to take on their classmates in hostile ways that they wouldn't have before. John Rogers is the professor who conducted the study that surveyed more than 3,000 principals nationwide. The study directly correlates the increase in discrimination to the political battles happening in these areas. It said purple districts saw three times as many reports of hostility since 2018. But Rogers says one of the findings he found most interesting wasn't the rise in discrimination. It was the fact that more principals also reported their students had taken more initiative to bridge those divides and find common ground. When people ask where I go or where I'm from, I like to say I go to Rangeview because of so many cultures I've gotten to experience here and so many things I've gotten to experience here. Hillary Nguyen is the president of Rangeview's Voices of Diversity Club, a group working to bring kids together. They recently held food tastings that highlight the cuisines of the school district's 130 nationalities. It has also worked to organize unified sports games like these, where neurotypical kids and kids with special needs compete on the same team. It creates more community, and it's good to see that we all feel powered here. It makes me feel so happy just seeing people come together. It's like we're so separated from things that we, all of us have so much in common with. Like, I know me being Vietnamese, I have a lot of things in common with my best friend who's Mexican. It all brings us back to Julio. Remember when he said these unified sports teams made him nervous at first? It's hard to see any of that behind his smile. And I'll never forget that first year we did this. So we were getting our first banner. <laughs> um, but we had a reporter come out, and uh, I'll never forget his quote. And he said that he kind of thought he was coming to cover another feel-good, feel-good mumbo-jumbo story. Those were his exact words. And I'll never forget it. And I thought, what? what? We're doing great stuff here. What do you mean mumbo jumbo? And then he started talking to the kids and he started talking about what is happening differently here at Rangeview that is bringing people together. And he ended his story saying, I think this is going to work and I think it's going to be successful. I had really fun with y'all today. Come here, come here. Come According here. to the dictionary, the definition of a team circles around the idea of competition. One, two, three, Raiders! Perhaps it should focus on the unity that spreads far beyond the lines of any court or field. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Aurora. She's a Grammy winner, a record breaker, and soon she'll add a new title to the list. We're going to tell you all about it next. 
Are you on Medicaid and Medicare? The U.S. government recently announced that 12.2 million citizens are eligible for additional benefits beyond what they received from the original Medicare or Medicaid. These benefits may include $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. Plus, you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. It's easy to see if you qualify. Call Go Medicare at 800 7 1-8-0-4-1-4. And see if you're one of over 12 million who may qualify. For $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. Plus, you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. This call is 100% free with no obligation to enroll. At 800-718-0414. Are you on Medicaid and Medicare? The U.S. government recently announced that 12.2 million citizens are eligible for additional benefits beyond what they received from the original Medicare or Medicaid. These benefits may include $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. Plus, you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. Call Go Medicare at 800 718 0414. If you have recently turned 65, you may be able to enroll in a new plan today that may include benefits like $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. This call is 100% free with no obligation to enroll. So call today at 800 718 0414. That's 800 718 0414. Check this out. Grammy Award winning superstar Taylor Swift will soon add mayor to her list of accomplishments. The mayor of Tampa, Florida says that she is making Swift the honorary mayor for the day this Thursday. That's when the pop star kicks off her three-day Eras tour in the Florida city. And Swift is going to be presented with the key to the city. Tampa officials are also going to light city structures in Taylor Swift red. Very cool. Huh. Thank you so much for watching. Scripts